So hi, everyone. I am Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours. And I started Chicago Movie Tours this year on April the 1st, right as the pandemic hit. So not theoretically a great time to begin a tour business. But nonetheless, I started it and we are here and we are going to make do with uh, all sorts of virtual tours and talks. And the main mission of Chicago Movie Tours is to help visitors and residents, like some of you in the comments, it seems, discover Chicago through film. And based on some of the Facebook comments that are listed tonight, as well as uh, underneath my Facebook event post for this particular talk, it seems as though some of you are joining us tonight because you are wanting to go behind the scenes of Chicago movies, which is part of the title for tonight's event, Behind the Scenes with Chicago Movie Tours, or you are anticipating that this is going to be a film tour. And all of that would certainly be fun, but that's not quite what this particular talk is tonight. Now, this talk will give you some information about those kinds of events and tours and things that we have coming up. But this little short 20 minute talk, 25 minute talk is really about you getting to know Chicago movie tours since we are very new to the tourism business in Chicago and getting to know me a little bit since I am pretty much the one woman show here with Chicago Movie Tours. And also it's about me getting to know you through some of the Facebook comments that you are leaving here. Hello from Ohio, by the way, Maggie. Um, and some of the questions that hopefully you can ask of me at the end of the talk tonight. So that's really what this chat is about. I'm going to share my screen with you one more time um, because I do have lots of clips and all sorts of things that hopefully um, we can, whoops, let me stop sharing that really quickly and try one more time. All right, so hopefully this one will work for you here. So again, this, this particular talk tonight is not going to be really a, a tour of anything, although that will come up and you can certainly ask me all sorts of questions about that as we, as we move forward. And one thing to keep in mind as we do move forward tonight is that there is a 20 second, 15 to 20 second delay between my slides and what I'm seeing over here with you on Facebook. So if you are asking a question and I don't get to it quite readily, that's because there's a little bit of a delay between these two things, all right? Um, so just really quickly, this talk came about because when I started Chicago Movie Tours, again, April 1st of this year, people have called me, people have approached me, people have responded to an article in the Tribune about me, asking basically two things. Number one, why I began this business and what I was doing out in the world before this. So really tonight, we're going to consider some of those things as well as these. So we're going to look at really what prompted me to start this small business. Number two, how a background in the humanities has prepared me arguably for this role. Number three, why shifting from higher education to tourism is for me at least a natural fit. And we'll talk a little bit more about that background in just a second. And then number four, how I plan to approach our relatively unknown future at this point. And I think you all understand what I mean about that. So let's jump into it really quickly. And again, if you have questions as we go along, I'll try to uh, look over at the other screen here and uh, answer those as best I can. If not, I'll get to them at the end of our little talk together. All right, so about a year ago, I began researching small businesses and tours that explored cities and movies or television. For example, I came across Atlanta Movie Tours, which unfortunately announced 10 days ago that it was closing its doors for good. So um, that's a really sad news in the tourism business there. Uh, for those of you who are really big Walking Dead fans and a lot of other TV shows that are filmed over there in Atlanta. So again, about a year ago, I've been re I began researching businesses like this. Atlanta Movie Tours being one of them, New York City TV and Movie Tours. And I know that there are a couple of you who are uh, in the Facebook comments that said you have been on a New York City TV movie tour. So maybe this is the one that you attended. Over across, um, 
uh, the West Coast, we have San Francisco movie tours. And then even across the pond, I have found British movie tours. So in all of my research about a year ago, again, I realized only a couple of tours exist in Chicago that focus specifically on our city and movies. And really those tours do not appear to run consistently. And that so few tours like this existed in Chicago was a little bit odd to me for really three reasons. Number one, Chicago's size. Chicago is the third largest city in the US. And as we have already seen, most major cities have similar tours like this. And even smaller cities like Charleston, South Carolina and Salem, Massachusetts have movie and TV tours associated with their cities as well. So it's a little bit strange that Chicago's size did not um, uh, have these kinds of events. A second reason I thought it was a bit odd that so few film and TV based tours existed in Chicago is the city's history. After all, Chicago, along with New Jersey, those places both served as Hollywood before Hollywood moved out west to California after World War I. In other words, there is a century's worth of material related to film here in this city. So if we go over to my website and scroll down, here we go, about three fourths the way down the home page, you'll see that I've put a, together a brief timeline of Chicago's film history. There it is. Do you know Chicago's film history is the title? And then we go from early cinema all the way to today. And early cinema, if you didn't know, again, served as headquarters for movie studios, distribution companies, and the biggest movie theater chain in the United States. We do have a little virtual walking tour on the people who ran that. The classical era, so this is the 30s to the 1950s really. Most production during this time took place out in Hollywood of course, but some films were shot on location here in Chicago. The modern era, and by modern I really mean 1970s to the 2000s. Chicago helped launch some of the most successful films of the modern era, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Fugitive for example. And today, because Chicago has really good tax credits and diversity provisions, it, it brings a lot of people here. And Chicago now ranks as the second best place in North America to work as a filmmaker. So that's my second reason, that Chicago has a huge film history here. So why do we not have any uh, or major companies that are providing tours on a regular basis. So a third and final reason I found it strange that Chicago offered so few of these type of tours is the city's recent history. And again, when I say recent, I mean really 1970s to the present. So for 21 years, Mayor Richard Daley carefully guarded the kind of movies that could be filmed here. And according to this 1981 article with featuring the Blues Brothers over there in the right corner, only movies that the mayor could take his family to see were allowed to be shot on location here. That means then there were no movies about Chicago mobsters or any films depicting the city in a negative light. But when Jane Byrne was elected mayor here in 1978, this policy changed. For her, any movie about Chicago should be filmed in Chicago. After all, um, whether that, that film depicts the city in a good way or a bad way. After all, the city is going to collect all the financial rewards. So I mentioned the Blues Brothers on that previous slide. When the Blues Brothers filmed here in 1979, it reportedly spent between six and seven million dollars in the city. So Jane Byrne there on the right established an office to assist Hollywood production companies and she worked with the Illinois State Film Office to lure filmmakers here. And again, the Blues Brothers, I mention it again because it is considered the best example really of how on location shooting in Chicago drastically changed after Daly's death and Burns policies went into effect. Because of the Blues Brothers, we have all those John Hughes movies and The Fugitive and The Untouchables and all these other iconic Chicago based movies that you're probably thinking of. And you can see from all the headlines of these articles that I've compiled, uh, Jane Byrne, patron saint of Chicago film industry. Jane Byrne made the best scenes in the Blues Brothers possible. Jane Byrne and the Blues Brothers, et cetera, et cetera. But you can tell that she contributed hugely to Chicago's film industry. And she, again, is a major reason that Chicago currently ranks as the second best place to work as a filmmaker. 
And someone I think was asking in the comments about the, uh, what's the first best place to work as a filmmaker. And I believe for 2020, it was Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I think of Breaking Bad. I'm trying to think of other, other TV series or films that are shot there aside from that and Better Call Saul. So maybe you can help me out in the comments on that. Um, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. As promised in the description of this talk, I'm also supposed to let you get to know me a little bit. In other words, talk a little bit about my background and how it prepared me for what I'm currently doing here with Chicago Movie Tours. So let's do that right now. And as you can probably determine, I have a bit of an accent that is not Chicago sounding, right? Um, I am originally from Louisiana, and it's probably not the part of the state that you're thinking of, which I am guessing is New Orleans, because anytime someone asks where I'm from and I say Louisiana, the immediate response is, oh, New Orleans, which is not the case. I actually grew up about four hours north of that city, much closer to the state lines of Mississippi, Arkansas, and Texas than where the festivities of Mardi Gras and all that really good food that you're probably thinking about like jambalaya and gumbo take place. Where I lived is a much smaller town in North Louisiana and it looks like this. This is the, in, the uh, entrance to the subdivision where I grew up and this is my grandparents' backyard. So while in Louisiana, I finished my bachelor's degree and my master's degree, both of them in English literature. And I have to say, Shakespeare was my guy. And you can say, see that as I pull the camera back and we take a quick swing around my home office here. So you can see a poster of Shakespeare there on the wall that I got um, while studying abroad in London. If you go over to this bookcase, you can see all sorts of Shakespeare books and a Shakespeare action figure, a Shakespeare bobblehead, one must have. Even a little bear that is dressed like Shakespeare. Um, we can move over to Shakespeare DVDs. You can pull the Shakespeare DVDs on that shelf as well. And if you move the camera over, there is a little globe theater, which is Shakespeare's theater that my husband put together for me, a little paper theater. And there is a bust of Shakespeare on the top shelf there too. So lots of Shakespeare that we have going on in my home office. So after graduating with my graduate degree, I moved to Dallas, Texas to work on my PhD. And when I began the program, I intended Shakespeare, as you might imagine, to be my focus. But Shakespeare courses were not offered regularly at this school. So during those off semesters, I turned to courses in film, which was another subject that was of interest to me. And back in Louisiana, my Shakespeare professor frequently integrated into her lecture Shakespeare films like these, Henry V, Romeo and Juliet, and Much Ado About Nothing. So I was familiar with the movie adaptations of his plays. And now with actual film classes available in my PhD program, it made sense for me to study Shakespeare in that manner. But then again, I'm taking film classes. So during a course on the Hollywood musical, another guy sang and danced his way into my life. And in the rain, what a glorious field. That guy, Gene Kelly. So again, if we turn to my home office, you can see that Gene Kelly and Singing in the Rain take up quite a bit of shelf and wall space here. Lots of books on Gene Kelly, uh, lots of DVDs on, um, on the films that he, that he starred in. You can go up to Singing in the Rain pictures and plates. And if you um, swing that camera all the way over to the wall, we have Singing in the Rain posters and all sorts of other memorabilia. So again, lots of Shakespeare and lots of Gene Kelly. So I graduated with a PhD in the humanities. And this brings me to what follows, which is really roughly tw 12 years of working as a professor. So from 2005 to 2017, I worked as a professor in Texas, Ohio, and Illinois. I have taught several courses on literature, film, TV and digital media, as you can see as we scroll there through my website. And some of my most popular classes centered on these three subjects, which are Quentin Tarantino and Spike Lee, Seinfeld, the TV show, we'd spent an entire uh, semester on Seinfeld, yes, and stand-up comedy on television. So those are the ones that tended to, to fill quite quickly. And as you might expect, classes on Gene Kelly and Shakespeare made their way into the curriculum as well. 
My terminal degree is a PhD in the humanities, which requires students to choose three fields of study within the humanities. And mine were literature, Shakespeare specifically, film adaptation, and the third one was teaching with technology. So this PhD program required those of us who worked as teaching assistants to create and update websites with our syllabi and our course schedules online for the students to be able to access. Now this was 1999, mind you, when websites like the Internet Movie Database looked like this, and email, if you had it, sounded like this. Welcome. You've got mail. I am going to try to fix my screen really quickly because it looks as though um, I am off camera. So let's see if we can fix that and then I will jump back in. There we go. So that's a hopefully a, a blast from the past for you for um, America Online, AOL there. So for the five years that I worked on the degree, my technology skills necessarily got better since we were required to do all of these websites and posting syllabi and that uh, and, and those sorts of things. So later on, when I was asked to teach online courses, which so many teachers are, are um, attempting to do and struggling through right now, I was not too intimidated by that. And when social media like MySpace and Blogger, another blast on the past for you, began to come to the forefront, I was able to contribute somewhat with ease to those things. And finally, much later on, when I gave my college students the option to create video essays like this one from a former student, a former student on Deadpool, I was able to guide them through the assignments. So while much of my academic career has prepared me for starting Chicago movie tours, perhaps most helpful in our current situation are these two things. My video essay assignments, which is on the right hand side of the page, and behind that is a course that I was asked to design called Creating and Maintaining Your Web Presence. So video essay assignment, it's exactly what it sounds like. It basically asks students to write a thesis and to make an argument about film or television just as they would in a traditional manner. But they would do that using video clips, screenshots, and other vi visual media to argue their point. So here's a really quick example of one of my students' projects that considers Jennifer Gray's character, Jeannie, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Jeannie, Ferris's sister, is seen as an antagonist in the film. She is constantly trying to expose Ferris's sick day scam to her parents, but is portrayed as the annoyed, frustrated, moody sister. I can't see that far. However, the audience can relate to her struggles. She feels she is on the other end of her parents' favoritism, and that she is not treated with the same respect and leniency as her brother. Stay home. I can't believe this. If I was bleeding out my eyes, you guys would make me go to school. This is so unfair. So if you're going to assign a project like this to college students in the early 2010s, it should require, or it should require that the instructor know how to do the project herself. So if any questions arise, whether they be technical or otherwise, hopefully she would be able to answer them. So I basically taught myself and then I taught my students how to make video essays. So knowing the basics of this technology, fortunately has allowed me to make virtual walking tours during this pandemic. So here, for those of you who are not quite familiar with Chicago movie tours, and hopefully that's one reason that you're here, here's a quick compilation of where I've been in Chicago and its suburbs over the last four months. I am Kelly with Chicago movie tours, and today I'm standing in front of Chicago's Union Station. I am standing in front of Old Joliet Prison's administration building. We are in Berwyn, Illinois, standing on the corner of Ogden and Harlem, both of which are in LaGrange, Illinois, which is where I am right now. We are now in Cicero, Illinois. Today we are in Waldheim Cemetery, or Waldheim for the German pronunciation. On our final stop, we'll check out the Sally Port directly behind me that was made famous by the Blues Brothers film in 1980. As we stand in front of Marshall Fields, so we have made our way back to Route 66. We are now in Countryside, Illinois. I am standing in the Midway, a public park on the south side of Chicago that's about a mile long. We are in Berwyn, a suburb a little bit west of Chicago that has its own bungalow district. 
Now I'm standing in front of LaGrange's Stone Avenue Station. I am at Woodlawn Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois. The Biograph Theater directly behind me. So today we're going to learn about silent movies and the Cracker Jack Company from the safety of my front porch. So there's a quick compilation. You can watch all of these on chicagomovietours.com or on our YouTube channel there as well. Uh, I see several of you talking about silent movies in Chicago on the, um, the chat here. Yes, silent films have a huge history here, which again is one of the reasons that I found it a bit odd that there, there were a few tours and talks companies here that were focused on film because there is, as you mentioned, um, a vast amount of history here. And Charlie Chaplin has filmed one here, uh, one film here as well. Um, so uh, another asset from my time in academia that helped me with getting Chicago movie tours off the ground is a course I was asked to design for graduate students, which I mentioned earlier, creating and maintaining your web presence. So in a nutshell, this is what students were learning, how to build websites and web presences, uh, how to avoid having your digital identity taken over by search engines like Google, and how to engage with social media effectively by examining ethics and SEO or search engine optimization. So how does my having taught something like this help with creating Chicago movie tours? Well, uh, you, I was able to design a website rather quickly and also not having to hire someone out to do it. I set up social media accounts just as I'm sure you all have uh, and was able to gain several, page, several, several thousands of page views and shares rather quickly. For instance, my walking tour on why Hollywood loves bungalows was um, had over 13,000 views in a couple of days there, which I know is not the, um, the numbers of someone like John Legend or Beyonce or Taylor Swift or any of that nature, but that's um, good in my book. Um, and as you can see here, as you, we go up to uh, the search function, I've been able to ensure that Chicago Movie Tours is on the first page of a Google search when you type in words that are associated with it. So again, knowing how to make video essays and teaching that course on one's modern day web presence have helped me quite a bit. And as you can hopefully tell, shifting from academia to tourism and public speaking is not that far of a stretch. After all, the process of creating a tour like this one, which is in a prop house in downtown Chicago, whether it be a face-to-face -face tour or a virtual tour, really does resemble the process of creating a college class and course syllabi like these, which are my syllabi from the Seinfeld course and the class on Spike Lee and Quentin Tarantino. Um, so you basically pick a topic that you're familiar, you research it, you condense the topic in a way people understand and you relay that information. So another reason that moving from academia to tourism is not a stretch is that for the most part, tour guides teach, right? And that's something I've been doing for more than a decade. Here's the bad news. Chicago Movie Tours, as I mentioned earlier, was supposed to kick off April the 1st, right as COVID-19 caused Illinois to shut down. There were two tours that we had scheduled for that weekend at this suburban prison where we would walk around the property and then talk about its relationship to Hollywood. Both of these tours were sold out and unfortunately we had to cancel them. So that's why the virtual tours have been happening. We've also been posting content regularly to social media and giving talks like this one called Beyond the Blues Brothers. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the profile in the Chicago Tribune that people have seen and been calling about have helped Chicago Movie Tours visibility somewhat as well. So the last thing to look at really quickly before we head out of here is how will Chicago Movie Tours look in the fall and in the winter? Will we still have tours and talks and classes? And the answer is yes. Uh, the right now, the only tour we have running in person since the pandemic hit is Old Joliet Prison in the Movies. We've only run it once, unfortunately. And our other in-person tour is Chicago Movies and Props. And since it takes place in that warehouse in the picture that you saw a moment ago with pretty tight quarters, we're not doing it right now. But there is good news uh, for those of you who are interested in the tour of Chicago's Movies and Props. And that is this right here.
So yes, some live full length tours will be happening even though they might be virtual ones. Uh, and we're also planning shorter free live virtual tours, uh, like afternoon snack size tours that right now we are doing on Wednesday. And then I have one coming up in a couple weeks on Thursday. So here's an upcoming snack size tour about 30 minutes on dogs in early cinema. Where, oh, where has my little dog gone? Nowhere, oh, where can he be? With his tail cut short and his ears cut long. Oh, where, oh, where can he be? Hark, hark, the dogs do bark. Beggars are coming to town. Some in rags, some in tags, and some in velvet gown. Some in rags, some in tags, and some in velvet gown. Some in rags, some in tags, and some in velvet gowns. So that will be Thursday, September the 17th at 7.30 in the evening as well. And you do not have to have a Facebook account to watch. So the other in-person tours that we are working on, such as the Art of Ferris Bueller and Chicago's Union Station and the movies that were in the works are being put on hold until COVID-19 is under control. But there are still other ways to discover Chicago through film with us, and that's with talks and classes. For example, our next public talks will be on Festivus, um, the Seinfeld holiday, offered free through libraries around the Chicago area. And another upcoming talk, I think it's the first week of October, is on movie makeup, costumes, and toupees in 1920s Chicago. You can register for that one on Eventbrite. We also have classes being offered through some community colleges like Gender and Sexuality in Hollywood and How to Study the Movies, both of which are offered uh, for a small fee on those. And finally, I'm also working on adapting some talks to either virtual walking tours um, or talks. We're not really sure where those are going, but some things for those are Chicago movie theaters and the 1918 flu pandemic the massacre of classical Hollywood, Chicago style, and comedians and conversations in Chicago. So until society returns to normal, that's kind of what we're planning to, to keep going here, helping people discover Chicago through film, even though it's very much in a different format than I originally intended. So thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight, and I will stop sharing my screen. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to hang out for just a little bit and uh, answer those for you. So there we go. Let's see what questions. I see that several of you are listing some of your favorite movies that have been shot here or around Chicago. Um, great car chase scenes, absolutely. The Blues Brothers being a really good example of that, right? The last 20 minutes of that film. Um, and I think that uh, someone was also mentioning Somewhere in Time, which is a movie people don't normally mention very much when um, I ask about Chicago and film. So yeah, the, the beginning of that film, I believe, is shot in Chicago before it moves up to Michigan, someone says. Um, what else? Other questions that you might have. Someone joined us on the Pet Cemetery tour. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Clarice, on that one. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll offer that one again in a couple of weeks. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Sarah's mentioning Chicago was Hollywood before Los Angeles. Yes, absolutely. Um, Chicago and New Jersey. And New Jersey because that's where Thomas Edison was located. Uh, and he was playing around with his kinetoscope in 1895. Uh, but Chicago was definitely doing things around that time as well. So both of those generally in, in film history get um, props for starting um, movies in the United States, for sure. So thanks for that. Let's see. How did you learn to integrate your tech background with your passion in film? Um, I think just a necessity, right? Uh, the, with um, YouTube coming out in full force after I finished the degree, 
and really just learning how to work with that and see how students were able to work with that in some ways easier than than I was able to and trying to adapt to what they were interested in rather than having uh, all written essays, which they have their place, of course, in academia. But um, it's also interesting to see how students are able to use that analytical reasoning that you would have for a written essay, but put it into something visual too. So that, that was always, always fun for me. Do you think movies will come back to Chicago for those of us who did movie extra work before? Oh yes, I think so. Um, I know that Fargo is, is filming here right now or either it's just wrapped up. I think it had two more weeks left in the season. Uh, that's the, the, the series that Chris Rock is starring in this um, September, I think. It comes out the very end of September. Um, so I think I, I just I assume and hope they're being as careful as possible with all of this. Um, and I think that the Chicago shows are supposed to start filming pretty soon too, right? Chicago PD, Chicago Fire and Med. Um, someone correct me on that. But yeah, I think those are starting to, to, to shoot in the next couple of months maybe. So yeah, hopefully it'll all um, come back for sure. Transformers, someone's mentioned. Uh, yeah, one of the horses uh, that is used in the, um, like a, oh, the, you put a quarter in outside of like a, um, a grocery store and it was a horse that kids ride. I'm not sure what those are called, but there's a horse that's used in the Transformers movie that we will feature in the prop house tour, the virtual tour that's going to start in October. So uh, there'll be that for you to look forward to. Anything else? I don't want to keep you past our 30 minutes that we're supposed to. You're welcome for the information. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, you can obviously find us here on Facebook and Chicago Movie Tours and on Twitter and on Instagram. And then you can also subscribe at chicagomovietours.com backslash subscribe if you want to have us directly into your inbox. So, um, oh, and you can also reach me at kelly at chicagomovietours.com if you would like to do that as well. So thank you very much and I uh, hope to see you on a virtual talk or a virtual tour and then one day in real life for <laughs> an in-person talk or an in-person tour as well. So thanks so much. See you around.